So how you doing with the playlist? Have you fixed your reel yet? Well, have you diagnosed and found out what's wrong with your reel? Well, we're going to start by taking this back cap off. But uh, hey, I've had lots of different reels over the years. I've helped lots of different people fix their own reel. And being Muzzy Professional staff, at times, I would uh, you know take a broken reel in, go ahead and fix it, and uh, give it right back or just swap out a spare that I had. Um, I kind of take it upon myself to know these reels in and out. And so we're gonna do some close up today. I've got three reels here and then we're gonna take a brand new reel right out of the box and I'm gonna show you how it can be better. But uh, I'll show you what's wrong with each and every one of these and how we can tune it to where it's you know better than it was the day it was new. Let's. Uh, Let's look at this reel, see what's up with it. So first off, first thing that you can do to know whether the reel needs to be shimmed or not is push right here. By pushing on this, I can watch this screw. I'll turn it so you guys can see it. And it doesn't move. So that means I have shimmed this. There you can see it right there. See just the slightest bit of movement? That's not bad. We can live with that. Um, so since I can't get to my line yet, oh, by the way, the, uh, okay, we've already got that backed off all the way because I've not been using it. Okay. Doesn't have line on it. Um, okay. I can grab this or I can grab my roto assembly and take my handle. Oh, there. See that? Uh-huh. Let's wiggle back and forth. And yeah, it's got a little bit more play in it than I thought. Where's my wiggle coming from? If I hold my main gear down, there we go. It's just a loose handle. All I gotta do is take this screw out, take our cap off, tighten up our handle, and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and look at another reel. Now, I can wiggle. Yeah, I can wiggle it a little bit. See our our, uh, our handle screw on the side over here? If you can see movement in it, chances are it'll take a shim. Because you can only see, you know, a couple thousandths. So, um, yeah. This one definitely could use some shims. Um, tell you what, let's go ahead, make sure our drag is all the way off. Take our cap off. Okay. I see I've got good line on this one. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's see if our drag is working. Um, go ahead and tighten it down a little bit. Yeah, it's working. It's actually working pretty smooth. Um, let's go ahead and pop this uh, pop this roto assembly off. See what it looks like. It looks pretty good. Pretty fair. I don't really see. There's a flat spot right there, just barely. But that's nothing. We'll let that go. Always push your button when you go to uh, thread the roto assembly on. That makes everything stick out. Well, let's see what the back of this reel looks like. Go ahead and give it a little turn. Yeah, buddy. Uh huh. That's what I thought. See how our timing plate has come off of our reel. And maybe if we turn it around, yep, I didn't have to turn it too far. I can see this shiny little tooth right here. Oop, I bumped the camera. I can see that shiny little tooth. 
telling me that the AR paw has slipped off one time or another. Don't look like it's been an issue since then. Oh, look at there. That little piece of metal right there. That used to be an AR paw tooth, but it ain't anymore. Let's see, what else? Now's a good time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's probably part of why our AR paw popped off. The reel in a load, you know, got pushed off to one side and then got her down in reverse. Ah, looky here. Here's another thing. If you look all the way down here in the bottom, we've got a brass washer on one side and a brass washer on the other side. So for whatever reason, this AR paw was shimmed improperly and it's not being held all the way over to the left like it should be. So first and foremost, this AR paw needs to come out of here. The brass shims both need to be on the right side. And once again, I will take my screwdriver and I will put it right here where the shims go. And there's lots of room in there. I mean, lots of room. Actually, after looking at this reel just a little bit more roll it around I guess we just got some black grease on here sometimes these are fairly greasy so uh, oof right in here these two teeth these tops of these two teeth are gone so what has happened guys, um, since it, it's a domino effect, since this reel's not shimmed properly, there's way too much movement in here. Since this AR paw is not shimmed properly, what has happened is in a, whether it be a big fish or an arrow in the mud situation, this reel got under a tremendous amount of stress. And I've already reeled all my line in the hole. So, um, but, so imagine everything tries to go in reverse and since the reel's not shimmed properly the AR paw is not shimmed properly what happened is this AR paw slipped off a tooth and it allowed the reel to go in reverse at some point either I was holding on to this or whoever's reel this is was they were holding on to this you know really difficult and then the only thing that can give is this main gear and the teeth. So since it's not shinned properly, the pinion gear, which is our brass gear in the front, and our aluminum main gear, that was the point of no return, the weakest point because, you know, our reverse uh, had already been broken. So when that happened, it ripped off that tooth, maybe two on this main gear, and like I said, one thing led to another, and when one thing breaks, it kind of, you know, breaks everything. So this is the importance, and this is why we shim our reels. Not only will I probably, I'll definitely replace this main gear. I will definitely put probably, probably three shims in this reel. I will also shim my AR paw the paw itself all the way to the left so I need both of my brass washers on the right and you know given the amount of movement that's in this reel it might not even be out of the question to go ahead and put a third brass washer over here on the right to make this just a little bit tighter you do have to watch that though because you still want to make sure that your AR paw moves up and down you don't want to put so many brass washers in there that it ends up being tight after you know shimming so um the the reel's totally rebuildable it is um but it's had one or two too many stressful situations to where you know something had to give and in this case it was the main gear on the ar paw side and on the main gear side so this main gear is trash all we got to do is take it out toss it out 
and uh, throw about six bucks at it with a you know about a what, what's bow fishing extreme charge for a main gear 450 okay so we're gonna throw 450 in here and, and uh, these uh, shims are about 30 35 cents we're gonna throw a dollar's worth over here six bucks we can have this reel up and running again and be you know really good but yeah that's uh that's really really sloppy and i can tell already i hold my thumb this is my handle test okay i hold my thumb on my main and i can move my handle back and forth too so once again we're going to take our cap off tighten up our um, our little brass nut that's on the end of our handle here and that's not going to cost us nothing unless the handle itself is wallered out now if it's got a lot of play in it and i don't think this one does if, if it did have it'd be a lot worse than that um but you know you can always replace this handle assembly too so that uh, that's actually a good one it shows a lot of you know things that can and will go wrong after time well guys as the rain pours down outside my window let's go ahead and look at one more old reel now this one i actually do have line on it so okay i can tell our alarm is not set Ooh, that uh that drag is turned all the way up Let's look down inside here. Aha! Interesting. Okay. You have to look way down inside there. Let me uh, let me go ahead and zoom in and hold the reel really still if I can. Look at the very center. Sorry, I hit the button. So look at the very center. Our roto assembly is running in reverse, but our reel, our handle is not. So what were to happen if, yep, just as I had feared. Let's go ahead and zoom in so I can show you. So if you can see right there in the center, You can see that our roto assembly isn't turning yep this one's going to come off um, hmm. this reel has been way back in the bottom of the drawer for a while and now I know why it appears that the threads are just broke that it's not tightening up anymore. I can see it's turning. But either way, yeah, it, it ain't supposed to do that. So um, let's just go ahead and take this off here. Yeah, something's, something's kind of screwy there. Looks to me like these threads have given way. What we can do, I have another roto assembly right over here. This is why we uh, this is why we carry a spare roto assembly. So I always like to push my button to stick that out. That way, it ensures that I start it straight. Okay. Now let's see, will it tighten up on this one? <clears throat> yeah buddy, it's actually pretty tight and as you can see it's spinning like it should. Huh. We, uh, we probably better mark this one because uh, I want to make sure that it ends up in the trash here later. Hey 
Hey guys, thanks for joining us on this episode today. You know, I hope this totally helped you and simplified the muzzy. I hope you guys never hesitate to take that back cap off and look to see what's going on in there. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, smash that like button if you like what you've seen here today, and we'll see you guys out on the water. Hey, share this video for somebody who needs to work on their equipment just a little bit. We all know that one guy. <laughs> we'll see you next time, guys.